Good evening everyone and welcome to Apex Racing TV. This evening the BSR MX5 Monday Cup heads to uh, Road Atlanta and uh, yeah, uh, alongside me is Tyler Vickery and on the cameras is Marco Barbanera and uh, yeah, uh, Tyler, uh, last week at uh, Tesco, Tesuba or however you say it, uh, yeah, uh, we just great racing and I think uh, this evening at Road Atlanta with uh, the straights as well, especially the back straights, so be, it should be uh, just uh, really, 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 really close racing and uh, but also push slip scene battles as well. Yeah, absolutely. To scoop it was one of those yeah, I mean it was one of those big races that there was a lot of overtaking that can happen. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of chaoticness where you you pretty much had to stay on your on your toes throughout the whole race. Now with the with us being here at Road Atlanta now, that's a whole different story. But still we still should have some great racing overall. Yeah, absolutely as a uh, yeah we're just in the middle of qualifying at the moment, I think we've just uh, got just under two minutes to, to the end of qualifying. And yeah, just uh, looking at the times at the moment, the times are really close. And also, uh, Road Atlanta is one of my personal favourites, uh, favourite tracks as well for the uh, sports car racing and also racing, in, especially in the MX5. And yeah, uh, uh, what's, your, what's your experience around here, Tyler? Have you done any Mazda races around here or uh, any races in general uh, around this track? Oh, I've done, I've done my fair share of uh, MX-5s here. Um, another car I've driven a lot of here, um, especially in a league, in a uh, league I run, is the all of the Indy cars. And trying to run Indy cars around here, it's a little bit scarier, to say the least. Especially with a lot faster speeds than the, than the um, sports cars and the MX-5s. So, still one of my favorite, but. Yeah, it's still a lot of work in progress for me, though. Yeah, I was going to say, especially, I guess, uh, the Indy car around here would be, with how, I guess, uh, I'm not, I'm not racing the, the new Indy car, but I'm guessing with uh, how stiff it's, how stiff it is, especially the suspension setup. But I guess uh, around here over the curves, it's a bit, it's a bit sketchy. Yeah, it can be a little bit sketchy. Um, there's a few corners that it, that the, it's actually pretty. Uh, fair with that it's not a gra that it won't bite you too much especially like um, as we're on board with the 87 of Steve Coley uh, long straightaways the car loves it but then as we're coming up to the uh, little chicane here the little final chicane the Indy cars actually like it I haven't had too many issues when I've done setups and stuff with it when we've been when that Indy car's been running here so it's there's certain spots in the tracks where you can be very where you have to be very cautious, but then there's other tracks where you can, where there's other portions of the tracks where you can be very aggressive as well. Yeah, absolutely. As, uh, yeah, we're just uh, on board with uh, Steve Cooley as he comes over the line to, I want uh, just to see where he qualifies and uh, yeah, he qualifies in 14th place. So yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it's, it's still just looking at the, the turnout of drivers as well. I think we've got 27 drivers overall. So yeah, it's still for a. Uh, for a Monday league and especially the Am League, it's uh, an Am League, yeah, I should say. It's a uh, yeah, it's still a good turnout, and uh, uh, just watching some people. What was oh, that? Someone was flying on the home street. <laughs> I think that was uh, Heffer decided to do a barrel roll there for a little bit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like watching a game of pinball. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, qualifying's just come, uh, just came to a close, and just. Uh, just waiting for the session to just waiting for the session to change over, and then we'll uh, take you through the grid. But uh, yeah, there there was a few people that impressed me last week at uh, just to scuba. Uh, uh, Tyler, uh, people like Mick Barry and uh, Dan Blake, uh, also uh, people like uh, Abila Largo as well. Yeah, there was good. There was people uh, people that were on form and got some de uh, pretty good results. And uh, is, is anyone that uh, anyone that you think will? Uh, that will stand out tonight, or the, the anyone that you predict to do well? Uh, I, I think Emilio has a chance, especially since with Emilio, he's got a little bit better lap uh, lap time for qualifying, so he's starting out at eighth. I think he'll be one. Uh, Dan Blake, uh, as usual, he'll be one. Uh, Carl Hardy though up in first. I'm kind of surprised with that. So I I, I want to I would almost want to keep an eye on him as well now. Yeah, absolutely. I was quite impressed by Carl last week. Uh, yeah, he done really well, and yeah, he got some good results. As uh, I think we're just about to, we're just uh, switched over to the race session, so we will take you through the good. 
uh, Carl Hardy takes pole position uh, for result clothing. Absolutely fantastic lap from Carl. Uh, Steve, Steve Everett is alongside him. Uh, Gregory G Giannini uh, is alongside him. Uh, fourth place is Jack Aston, my teammate from the, the, the Tuesday Night League. Uh, fifth place is Con uh, Constant Arthur. Uh, Dan Blake alongside in sixth. Says Jez Banks in seventh. Emilio Largo in eighth. Cesare Rizzo in ninth. Uh, McBarry in tenth. And uh, Tyler, uh, you, can you take us through the, the rest of the grid? Yeah, uh, 11th place is going to be uh, David Ayers from uh, Result Clothing. Uh, 12th is going to be John T John Tussing. Mikey Key is going to be in 13th, another Result uh, Result Clothing uh, driver as well. Uh, 14th is going to be Max uh, Maximilian DeAngelis. Uh, 15th is going to be Steve Cooley. Dan, uh, Dale Benison is going to be 16th. Andrew Barber in 17th. 18th is going to be Gary Anderson. Uh, 19th is going to be Alec Chesney. Um, 20th is going to be Pete Van Gogh for, uh, well, it has on here Momo, but they, they're they still back and forth. Uh, Pete Van Gogh is going to be in 20th. Nick McCarron in 21st. Then we have Sergio Morora in 22nd. Joe McDonald, 23rd. Nico uh, Shembri in 25th. Andrew Derrick, 26th. Teddy Reed in 27th. And Rick Rick Hunterfield, uh, Hunterfield in 28th. Yep, as a yeah, we're just waiting for the lights to come on and just waiting for some people to uh, <clears throat> excuse me, just waiting for some people to grid up and uh, we should be getting this race underway in uh, a few a few moments time as yeah, just uh, yeah, was I quite, think uh, um sorry to jump in. I think I think Steve Hepford and Jack Ashton are gonna be pit starting just to give the AM driver some room. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Is a uh, yeah the lights will come on, just wait for the lights to go out and away we and away we go. Oh yeah, great start from Zach Carson off the line. Uh, Giannini is uh, just right behind him as well. Is uh, the head down to turn one, and it'll be excuse me. It'll be interesting to see if uh, these guys get through uh, get through the first few corners uh, in one piece without uh, any issues. Yeah, as they're heading up to the next few uh, corners right now. Ooh, I heard some contact. Looks like some little bumping and shoving. Yeah, is it? Yeah, they're just coming through the through. Ooh, is that just coming oh, wow. through the air? They're just coming through the S's now, and it's the uh, current leader is uh, Carl Hardy with uh, Gregory in second, and constant, co uh, constant after uh, in third place as well. And uh, yeah, the outside curve, uh, Tyler. I'm just looking at the outside curve on the on the exit of the S's, and yeah, if they, if you if you run uh, if you even run uh, remotely wide or take too much exit curve, it, it can unsettle the car and make the car bounce, and you could you're just a passenger as well. Ooh, wow. Ooh, that was close. Yeah, that was, uh, could have been very disastrous there for Carl Hardy, but that was kind of a very close call for Gregory, because that could have been... Yeah, that was a bit of a, I thought it was going to be contact, but, yeah, I think, uh... Oh, oh boy. Those are, are going three wide down the back straight as, uh, yeah, I wonder if they'll end in disaster. Who's going, who's going to back out of it first is, is uh, yeah, oh, Dan Blake was up the inside and makes a move. Ooh. Oh, he's not able to hold it though. As his te teammates coming up, uh, he has Banks is coming up alongside, and now he's going to lose out to uh, Cesar Rizzo. As yeah, I was about to say Rizzo's had a great start. He's a yeah, Rizzo started in ninth, uh, eighth or ninth position, and he's up into up into fifth place. And yeah, a good start from Cesare at the moment, and he's uh, he's up into fifth, and yeah, doing a good job. Yeah, with Dan Blake doing that. Uh, late dive bomb move in the last chicane he lost all momentum there there was no way he was going to be able to hang on to there so being able to get away with only losing a few positions and falling back to where he started that was a good good recovery there for dan as the rest of the field still in a freight train behind dan so a lot of cars oh someone oh, wide. that was a 20. that was a 20. oh someone else hit the wall someone hit the barrier oh dear oh dear someone got involved oh yeah i've just Boy. What happened there? It's a uh, who's that? It's a uh, Mickey. It's Mickey Key. Uh, I wonder if he can get a replay of possible Marcos. Yeah, they're just uh, oh. a probably a little wide. Ooh, there goes the twenty oh. on that little rumble. Oh, Giannini was it just spun by himself? Ooh. And then okay. And then, we'll have to yeah. look back Ooh. at that. I think I think Mikey was in the wrong place at the wrong time because. 
Gary Anderson, one of the two cars hit that rumble strip wrong and just absolutely just ramped off the tire barrier and the other car that was involved had nowhere to go when it happened. Yeah, what 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 the what this has allowed the Cal Hard to the Hardy to do though is a yeah, just stay get back is get back in to the top three and it's gonna be trouble to say we're looking at the Largo Lar Lar and David Ayers at them. Uh, yeah, David Ayers at them. Uh, not David Ayers, Mick Paris, sorry. Is a uh, yeah, uh, yeah, so pick her up at the moment and yeah, it's uh, it, ooh, it's, Oh it's, the feeder is Sims sport. Oh that was Dan, oh man. Unfortunate for Dan. Ooh, ooh Mick Barry is also oh. spin around. Man, a lot of a lot of drivers having issues with this track. And uh, McBerry dropping down the field as well. Boy, oh boy. And what that has allowed the uh, Carl Hardy to do is move up in second place. And yeah, he's not Carl Hardy's not far off the. He's not the, not that far away from the leader either. So yeah, I wonder if uh, Carl can try and get back up to the leader uh, and try and try and possibly challenge for the win. Yeah, it definitely is. Carl Hardy is right now almost three seconds behind Constant Arthur. So. So, I mean, hey, Const Constant Arthur, he's definitely being constant right now and being consistent in race pace. So, if he keeps that up, he might have an opportunity to win this race. Yeah, I like that, I like that pun you used, by the way, Tyler. That was uh, very good. <laughs> I was waiting for you to. I was waiting for you to see how long it was taken. Uh, as a, yeah, Largo's going for the overtake, I think. And, yeah, yeah, I wonder if he can try and get the, mo try and get the move done as, as a. Yeah, for some reason my trackside camera is not is a uh, focus on on a bit of, on a bit of grass is. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, yeah, Emilio, Emilio held off, so I think Emilio and Emilio knows that he needs to work with Car Hardy and David Ayers and trying to catch back up to uh, Constant Arthur right now. I mean, they're only they are closing the gap right now. Um, the gap from second to first is only 2.2, so. They have an opportunity to catch up. They just gotta not make any mistakes and be able to. And they should be able to catch up to um, the 21 of Constant Arthur. Yeah, absolutely. Is a just a yeah, just at the moment. I think we're just a, we're on board with Emilio Largo and just going through the S's. And a, yeah, Largo's currently sitting in sitting in a third place at the moment. And yeah, a, I've been quite impressed by Emilio in the in the in the Am League. He's a He's always he's been he's been really quick in the series so far this season, and he's always been right up there. Or, if, but he's always had he's always had the uh, bad luck sometimes, and just uh, been caught up in other in incidents. Uh, sometimes of his own doing, or just uh, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, definitely. Is uh, I just now had an opportunity to look at the lap times. In the twenty one actually ran a quickest lap time of the event so far with a 136.5 but seeing how that gap is still dropping I wouldn't be surprised if Carl puts in a, a purple lap here as he was purple uh, going into um, the last heading into the last sector so he might have an he might be having an opportunity of having a quick lap here for Carl Hardy yeah absolutely as a, yeah Carl Hardy still doing a good job in second place at the moment and yeah a uh, uh, in fourth place as well is Carl Hardy's teammate is David Ayers is uh, so yeah it's a it's a good a good race so far for the result Golden guys uh, even though people like Matt Barry have had issues uh, have just just had issues and just bad luck uh, so far in race one but yeah it's still still a good race so far for the result Golden guys in second and fourth place yeah uh, hopefully they can hang hang on, hang on to those positions to right to the end of the race. Yeah, definitely. We're about halfway through the race now. Uh, Constant Arthur is still your leader with a 1.6 second gap now as it is closing. But it's not closing quick. Carl Hardy has been running a little bit three tenths of a second quicker the last lap. And then third place is Emilio Largo just hanging on to Carl Hardy. But with half the race gone, still got a lot of work to do to try to catch up to Constant Arthur. Yeah, absolutely. As a year of this week. Yeah, just watching the just the on board with uh, Cesare Rizzo at the moment. And yeah, yeah, Cesare's doing a good job at the moment, and he's in seventh place. And yeah, he's got a, he's got a run in the uh, Tustin in front of him. And I'm, I wonder if uh, Rizzo will be able to make a move and try and get it done into this uh, into this chicane and 
uh, the yeah the chicane and see if he can get a move done. He's got a, he's got a run on Tustin. I wonder if he's going to try and pull, pull out and uh, try and go for a move. But he I think, might uh, not because he's got a little bit of damage on that right front. As whoa, look out, look out. That was a Fury Sim Sport driver. I don't know which one. Ooh, Ooh. contact. Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, that was a bit of a that was a bit of a heart and mouth moment. As you have a look back up at the front at the moment with uh, Kyle Hardy and Amelia Largo, and uh, you, yeah, these guys are currently battling currently battling for second place. And yeah, yeah, yeah Kyle Hardy's doing a good job at the moment, and I think. Uh, be a, a, it would be a well earned as a second place if they held on for it. And just, uh, I think uh, at the moment it looks like uh, Constant Arthur is uh, pretty just uh, managing to ma maintain that gap. And I think uh, the, the only chance that oh, his car runs wide. Wow. Oh, I thought oh, I thought he was going into the wall there for a minute. Is a uh, good reaction though by him. Yeah, that was a good. That was a good. Yeah, exactly. It was a good reaction by him. And uh, yeah, just that. Uh, at the moment, it seems to be it seems to be the race is uh, settled down at the moment, and yeah, there's uh, not really I can't really see that much going on at the moment apart from this battle for second place. Yeah, and with with Carl making that big mistake there, it did it did bump the gap back up to to the leader by by a little over two seconds. So not and especially not having a, a lot of time now, it looks like Amir goes Amelia. Woo, there. Okay, that Ooh, was, that was uh, interesting. A little bit of a tap there, and Emilio checked up very quickly to make sure Carl Hardy could hang on to it. Because boy, that could have been—that would have been interesting. Yeah, I was about to say it could have been disastrous, but uh, yeah, luckily both both of them managed to survive, and yeah, they're still going at the moment. And I think uh, we've got just under, or well, we're just coming up for uh, up to five five or six minutes remaining uh, as we cross the line. Uh, so yeah, I'm guessing about we've got about. Probably three laps remaining. Yeah, I, I want to say three laps, roughly. So, yeah, I think uh, as it stands, I think uh, Constant Arthur is just uh, maintaining that gap to uh, Cal Hardy. As uh, yeah, just to uh, just to just to take you through the classes in this series as well. Even though it's a uh, even though it's a uh, it's uh, a championship or a series or fun series, you can oh, this car runs wide. Boy, uh, oh, yeah, I was going to say it, but, uh, yeah, the. What you seen at the top of the street there? This oh no! Cat. Oh, someone. I uh, said David there. And he's got a lot of damage. Oh no! I, I. Oh, why do I have a feeling it's in the one spot? I'm going to. Well, he just oh, lost it in the corner. Oh, and then just unfortunate luck. Wham into the concrete wall. Out. Yeah, that was unlucky for David. He was having a good run there. Uh, yeah, it was. I was about to. It was a, as you seen at the top of the the broadcast there, uh, there was a, uh, two colours for the uh, both classes, even though it's an arm series. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the green colour is the uh, is the is the arm class. Why which is for, uh, which is for drivers that are maybe not as quick or don't have the, as much time to practice uh, for races, or maybe just uh, maybe more suited to being in a, a class with a, a, a class with uh, drivers that are on a similar foot similar pace. Uh, uh, yeah, the blue car is the uh, is for the pro drivers, which is uh, the, the the quick drivers and really like the drivers that you normally see up at the front. Yeah, uh, some for example, your Steve Heffords, your Jamie Ayers, or uh, Ryan Holmes, for example. Uh, just to name a few uh, from the choose from the choose the lead. But yeah, I say uh, the two two cars for the two classes is uh, we're riding on board with Emilio Largo and again uh, he's still he's still right behind Carl Hardy, but a fair play to Carl Hardy. He's managed to put up a great a great defensive drive so far. Yeah, and I think now for Emilio Largo, I think it, my, it's with three minutes to go in the race. I think uh, Emilio is just now focusing on trying to see what he can do to try to get around Carl Hardy for a second. Because unless Constant Arthur makes a big mistake, uh, Con it's going to be more fighting for second now. Yeah, absolutely. As, uh, yeah, both of them. Excuse me. Both of them are uh, just on the home straight now, and I have to say. They've closed the gap a little bit on the constant Arthur, so I wonder if they if they'll be able to try and get try and get some slipstream from uh, from Arthur as uh, we look at the replay of uh, of Dale Benison and who's up behind him. It's Steve Hefford and oh, oh it's just contact. No. Yeah, that slight contact into the concrete wall and 
Yeah. Lad. Yeah, I don't think it was anything intentional from Steve. I think it was just King. He might have uh, got caught out by uh, just carrying more corner speed, or maybe the uh, deal with this was just uh, a little bit sore through the corner then that Steve expected, and just uh, Steve got caught out by the speed difference. But uh, as well as back up at the front, uh, we've just got under, we've got, we've got two, two laps to go. Uh, so yeah, it looks like uh, this battle for second place will go right down to the wire. And I think, uh, what would you do, uh, Tyler, if, if you were Emilio, would you uh, wait until the back set on the last lap to try and make a move? Uh, well, definitely that, plus, whoa, as oh, someone goes over to, yeah, I think uh, someone got caught off there from Gregory Yanni, or I think, oh, it looks like it was the lap car of Pete Vangle trying to get out of the way, and Gregory Yanni just came flying out of nowhere. Um, but going back to the situation with Emilio Largo and Carl Hardy is, okay, actually, we're gonna keep an eye on this battle here for fourth is... Gregory Gianni gets around Cesar Rizzo and then the Team Fury Simsport drivers. Ooh. Yes, Banks! Oh, contact. Oh, that was... Oh, boy. Dan's just not having any luck right now. As, yeah. uh... Yes, Banks has gotten around John Tussing and... Boy, oh, boy, this is, uh... Oh, dear. This... This might not end well. That's it coming up to the final chicane now. Yeah, I was about to say uh, that was a bit of a uh, argy bargy. It looks like Riz has just backed off completely. He he doesn't want any of this any. Yep, as a uh, yeah, we've crossed the line to start the last lap. Uh, I believe it's the last lap. Is uh, yes, uh, lap. Yeah. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what Emilio does in the home. Uh, not the home straight, the back straight. Uh, if he can get a good running power, and I think uh, if yeah, I, if, if I was Emilio, I would wait until the back straight and get a running car. Yeah, that's the only Ooh. thing. Oh, that was that's not that was not helpful there for Emilio because he needed to keep the gap as much as possible. He's got to have a better run through here now and hope Carl goes uh, wide because that's the only way that Emilio is going to be able to get any kind of run. Uh, it's about dead even. I don't think he gained any spot any gap on that. I'm very surprised. I'm surprised that wasn't a slowdown. You and me both. So, uh, yeah, he's right behind Carl as uh, a uh, head for the exit. Oh, here we go. Straight. Got a better yeah. run. He's got a good run. I'll be interested to see if he can uh -huh. get, get a good slipstream. Yeah, he, yeah, he should get the slipstream now. Now the question's going to be is how much will Carl defend? Carl's already moving right. Get ready for the left and right pretty soon. I mean, he's got the run. Oh. oh, he's holding. Oh, he's gonna try to go for a late move. Oh boy. Oh wow. As uh, yeah, uh, as we come up, come up to the come up to the home straight, uh, constant offer is going to going to be is going to take a take the one in race one, and it's a uh, that was a very good drive oh, by constant offer. Look at uh, back, he's got the inside. Oh, he's over into the line for second. Oh, oh, Hardy. Oh, Hardy oh, hangs on for a second. Oh, oh boy, yeah, that's uh. John Tustin going for a uh, wild ride there. Boy, oh boy, what the heck happened there? Yeah, that was a bit. Uh, that all kicked off as a. Uh, it looks like. Uh, and Cooley, Cooley ran out of ran out of gap. Uh oh, here comes this replay. Oh, this ain't gonna be pretty. Is it, yeah, oh, we did, uh, yeah. 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 That was that was always going to happen. Yep. Yep. I just think. Uh, both of them just didn't leave it, didn't leave it, uh, leave each other enough room, and yeah, it was always bound to end up in contact. Yep. Yep. And up, down, up, down, twisting around, and finally <laughs> it's. As a uh, yeah, Steve Foley, as you say, Tyler yep. ran out of gas yep. on the on the run up to the line, but luckily it's downhill and he can just coast. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> And seeing okay. that he's able to make it that far before running out of gas, that's kind of. But yeah, I have to say, Tyler, that was a, that was awesome racing. As a David Davis was running to feel as well. What what is going on? I guess a few people thought they can make it on two point one gallons, and looks like looks like that answer is wrong. Yep. 
as a uh, here just waiting for the remaining cars to come over the line as a uh, Mickey Key comes over the line to finish in 15th and uh, I believe it was 15th yeah what no 16th sorry uh, yeah just as a uh, we're just waiting for the results to pop up on screen and uh, we'll take you through the, the results but yeah that was an awesome race Tyler I enjoyed that most definitely there as a uh, yeah, the results up are on the results are on screen now. As a constant offer takes out takes the one in race one. Carl Hardy just takes second and they take take second ahead of Greg Greg I say it again Gregory Gian Giannini. Uh, fourth place was Jez Banks. Fifth place was a uh, Cesare Rizzo taking a taking a great fifth place. Uh, Steve Cooley finishes in sixth. Nick McCarron takes seventh. Alex Cherney takes eighth. Uh, Mick Barry recovers uh, back into the top ten in ninth. And rounding out the top ten is Andrew Barber. Steve Hefford comes up and finishes in 11th after starting in the pit road for uh, giving the AM drivers an opportunity. Uh, John Tustin co coming up in 12th. Melia Lagro after having some a really unfortunate race there at, near the end, finishing in 13th. David Ayers and oh, actually, wait a minute. Uh, it must Emilio must have had some kind of penalty. I just noticed that now. Him in thirteen. Yeah, I think it, yeah, I think it. unless yeah, unless unless it was a slowdown, but that that's interesting. So Emilio Lago actually finishing thirteenth now. Uh, David Ayers in fourteenth. Dale Benison in 15th, and then Mikey Keen, the last car on the lead lap, in 16th. Uh, Dan Blake and Peter Van Gool finishing one lap down in 17th and 18th. Maximilian DeAngelis finishing in 19th after getting caught up in a wreck. And Gary Anderson finishing uh, 10 laps down in 20th. And then Jack Ashton, Sergio Mara, uh, Joe McDonald, Amory, Ralt, Nicholas Rembury, Alex De uh, Andrew Derrick, Teddy Reed, and Rick Hundafin all uh, not taking the start. Yep, is a yeah. Uh, that was a bit of a yeah. The close it, the last lap, about the last lap of race one was a wild, a, a wild ride you could say for some people. But yeah, uh, overall that was good racing and a good way to kick off the evening. And yeah, uh, we're just going to go for a commercial break now. But uh, don't go away and uh, join us for race two for for a uh, yeah race two of the evening. And uh, uh, make sure you do make sure not to go away.
Before you can get on track, you'll need to calibrate your wheel and pedal set. You'll need to do this in iRacing even if you have already done this using your own controller software. Prior to entering the sim, make sure you've downloaded and installed the latest drivers from the manufacturer's website. Once that's done, follow these easy steps to calibrate your controller. We recommend calibrating in a test session, so pick a car and then click test. Don't go into a practice or official session. The last thing you want to do is have you go on track and crash into another car. Once you're in your test session, click on the options button. You will then see input calibration. 
This is where your calibration takes place. Start by clicking on the steering button. You will then be prompted to turn your wheel fully one direction and then another. Make sure you place your wheel back into its centering position before hitting done. Now, you'll be asked to turn your wheel 90 degrees to the left. Make sure it's at 90 and hold it there while hitting done. For pedals, click on the pedals button. Here you'll be asked to press the throttle all the way down and then release it. You'll do the same for the brake and clutch pedal if you have one. For the gearbox, you'll first be asked to set buttons for sequential shifting. Once complete, a prompt will ask if you have a H pattern shifter. If not, hit no. If yes, click it and you'll begin to map the gears individually. Once you've completed these steps, you are calibrated and ready to go racing. Hello everyone and welcome back to Apex Racing TV. Uh, you join us for the race 2 uh, here at Road Atlanta. And uh, alongside me is Tyler Vickery, I'm going to play Mark Barbonero and Calmos and yeah Tyler, uh, yeah that, uh, that ending to race 2, uh, well race 2, race 1 was absolutely fantastic, uh, crazy in a way, but uh, yeah even even resulted in a, in a roll over in the final court. Yeah that was definitely a uh, wild uh, race to say at least, I feel bad for the one driver with end over end because man that was just unfortunate luck there but yeah it was good to see some great racing and especially when it looked like it was a fuel mileage race at first for a couple of drivers yeah absolutely it looks like uh, as you as you said at the end of the uh, end of race one pal, it looked like uh, some people some people got the fuel calculation wrong and uh, some people just ended up uh, ended up spluttering uh, on the exit of the final corner and, but yeah, the, the racing was great, and I think it's a uh, it's a uh, it's it's a taster of uh, what we're what we're in store for tomorrow. And I think uh, tomorrow with uh, the, the, Tuesday, the Tuesday night we'll get with more cars around here. It could be it could be chaotic, but also it could it could uh, produce great racing at the same time. Yeah, definitely, and it'll be interesting to see how race two goes. It looks like it's going to be about the same thing. Uh, a lot. But a lot of things can happen, I mean, especially when little little incidental contacts causing a lot of carnage. And it, it, it'll just be interesting to see how much patience uh, these guys will get. Yeah, absolutely. As, uh, yeah, we're just, uh, just in the in closed stages of uh, qualifying for the race 2. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah not, as many, not as many cars for race 2, Tyler, but uh, yeah, still, still a reasonable turnout for race 2. We're the 15 cars at the moment. And, yeah, just uh, yeah. Also, address what is look well that uh, people like that. I was expecting Dan Blake to be up at the front and uh, possibly take the winning race one, but uh, yeah, just uh, Dan Blake hit, unfortunately hit, ended up having some issues and just uh, it just didn't seem to didn't seem to go his go his way. Yeah, it just seemed like a lot went went wrong for him, and that that's not our that's I I can definitely say that is not our usual Dan because he's a lot better racer. Um, than that, but I, I think it was just he had some bad luck and trying to make it through the field and just got caught up in some more really bad luck. So hopefully, hopefully he'll be able to hang up front this time and not not get caught up in any kind of mistakes or anything. Oh, as a yeah, I just looked. Back and I wonder what happened there. Ah, uh, good old. <laughs> Uh, good old uh, result clothing teammates doing their uh, normal, their little normal strategy in wiping each other out. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh. uh, yeah. Qualifying is just coming to a close, and yeah, just uh, looking to see if there's any anyone else on the any qualifying laps. Is uh, just watching, just watching Emilio Largo come across. Uh, Come across the hill next of the final corner to put in a qualifying lap, I think. And it'll be interesting to see where he qualifies as a Largo crosses the line and no time. Oh, no time. Hmm. So 
looks like he was just looks like he'll start in the back, which he he's got some good advantages over it, so he might have it. He, he'll have an opportunity to catch back up with the rest of them. As a yeah, just yeah, there's quite quite a few people who uh, want from impressive drives out. Um, excuse me. In race one, yeah, I was quite impressed by Carl Hardy holding on to finishing finishing the top three. That was a good drive by Carl, and uh, it was a good defensive drive uh, for most of the race from him to, uh, to hold off Emilio Largo. Uh, what turns out, uh, Emilio Largo ended up getting a slowdown and didn't serve it, and unfortunately got a penalty at the end of the race and ended up finishing in P13. So, yeah, uh, not as many cars in this race, but plenty of plenty of arm drivers to keep an eye on and uh, yeah I think uh, with it just being mainly arm drivers it should be it should be a lot more a lot more closer racing yeah definitely it should be so it'd be interesting to see what happens is it looks like pretty much the field is set now as so we're just waiting on one more car to cross the line which it looks like it might be we're waiting on Emilio again which is kind of interesting how he was able to get in, get a lap in now so yeah, definitely. As a, a real... Excuse me. Oh, never mind. As a, <laughs> just, just a bit too late. As a, yeah, I think the session is just about to switch over now. So uh, when the grid comes up, we'll take you through the grid for uh, for uh, the start of race two. Yeah, uh, Dan Blake takes pole position. Alongside him is Craig Jones for result clothing. Jez Banks in third. Carl Hardy in fourth. Uh, Mickey Key uh, in fifth. Uh, John Tustin in sixth. Alongside John is, is Steve Cooley, uh, David Dares in 8th, uh, Mick Barry in ninth, uh, and right at the top 10 is our Andrew Barber. Yep, then uh, rounding out the uh, 11th is going to be Dale Benison. 12th is going to be Steve Hefford, who will start on pit road as he's a pro. Emilio Lago going to be in 13th. Nick McCarron, who's also a pro, will be starting in pit road. Um, he'll be in 14th, and then Cesar Rizzo rounds out your 15 car. As, uh, yeah, we're just waiting for uh, waiting for the cars to line up and wait. Oh, the lights are coming on right now. That was uh, a bit quick. As, uh, yeah, the lights are just about to go out and we'll be underway. As uh, yeah, the lights will go out and uh, we are off for race two. Yeah, uh, Dan Blake gets a brilliant start uh, just behind Dan Blake is Craig. Is Craig Jones uh, third place is Jez Banks as uh, Carl, H Carl Hardy is uh, is alongside Jez Banks or just about alongside is ahead in turn one and yeah, uh, they'll make it through turn one uh, nice and clean. But uh, you know, I think yeah, the big question is, can they get can they get through the SEs uh, without any issues? Uh, looks like it. Here goes Emilio Lago going already up on the inside, heading towards the end. Great move there as the rest of the field starting to go single file, and Dan Blake already pulling out a nice, decent lead. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, Dan Blake's made a good start. He's slowly, slowly but surely. Ooh, I heard, I hear screeching tires. Yeah, and I heard, I heard there tires goes the. Oh man, John Tusting just having some bad luck. My goodness. Yeah, uh, I think this uh, uh, may have just been. Uh, I wonder if he can get a replay to see what happened to John Tustin. Is uh, he's managed to get going again, but he's a uh, at the back of the field as we look at a replay of John Tustin coming through the S's, and I wonder if it's just the rumble strut he's been caught out by or the, the inside curb. Yeah, oh, yeah. Around, yep, inside curb got. Yeah, the yeah. inside curb just done set with the car, and uh, he was just a passenger. Yeah, you, you can't you can't attack that inside curb. That's that's especially for this track and with this car, uh, that's a big no no. Uh, honestly, as uh, we we'll get the number one checking up a little bit here, giving him some, giving the giving the result clothing car some room. But yeah, that that corner. You, whenever you attack that corner, never try to use the use that inside rumble strip there on that left hand side because. A lot of times, if you use it, it's gonna end poorly. Absolutely, as a yeah, we're just looking at Cesaro Rizzo at the moment. He's a uh, managed to move up. He's managed to move up into the top ten, and he's having a good, having a good run. At, oh, is the uh, result clothing car right? Oh, look out! Body. Oh, hold on. Backing up very quickly gives everyone. Oh, that was a. Uh, I think that will. I think that will muck up anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, I thought he was going to spin Definitely. out back and. I thought he was going to spin back out into the traffic, but luckily Mick managed to hold the brakes and reverse on, reverse onto the grass. So yeah, good driving, good awareness by uh, by, by Mick as well. He, he managed to get off the track as quickly as possible and get going again. As a. Uh, oh, Rizzo has issues. 
Oh, he got a slowdown. Yeah, it's, he's going to lose another spot, though, to Dale uh, Benison, though. Maybe not. As a, yeah, the res was minus. Oh, excuse me. As they look back up at it, up at the front of it, Jez Banks is making a, he's trying to make the move on Craig Jones as a head down into the into the final chicane. As a, I wonder if Banks Banks can get the try and get this move done uh, without any issues. And he's up the, up the inside of go. Oh, Jesus, Ooh, that was close. As a yeah, Carl Hardy just clipped the grass, I think, and just got sideways on the brake. And, and uh, yeah, behind the uh, Carl Hardy now is his three te his two teammates uh, or three teammates. Uh, or two teammates, I should say, get get it, get it right, Ryan, uh, Mickey Key and David Dills. <laughs> yeah, and I think it was actually Craig Jones that got a little sideways there. He turned a little early, and I think he was thinking that he was going to be in the clear, so... Here's here's the interesting though, thing, though. Dan Blake is in the lead, Jess Banks is in second. That's Fury, Fury, uh, Fury Motorsports there for you. And those with both of them teammates. Now you got third through sixth, Result clothing of Craig Jones, Carl Hardy, Mikey Key, and David Ayers. Who David Ayers is a little bit running, running a little bit behind, and he needs to catch up. But your top, pretty much your top six Ooh, are all Blake. teammates. Oh, damn, had issues, and that almost went disastrous for Yes Banks there. Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if Dan Blake got sideways on X of uh, the S season. I want to say, yeah. I was going to say, he looked like he had a slowdown or the. As we look at the replay, I think it, I think it is the outside rumble strip almost bit him there for a second. Oh yeah, cl very clean inside there. Comes to the inside. Oh. Ooh, actually, he attacked the corner a little too hard and had way too much speed. Great catch. Is a yeah the, the the result the result guys are right behind him now. And if they had to get a chance, so they they might might try, might try and make a move or uh, try and make a, a double pass and then uh, we've lost Nick Barry. Oh, something's happened to McBarry. Oh, uh, there we go. Ooh. That's what happened. That's oh, that's how oh, Ma that's how we lost McBarry. Boy, I was wondering why. I, I was wondering why he was all of a sudden down at the bottom. As we're just looking at a replay of McBarry now to see a uh, what happened, and I wonder if he just oh he just got sideways in the exit, heading onto the back straight, and just they uh, looked like he flipped, flipped the wall. Yeah, it was just really, really unfortunate luck there, but still, still top four, still within two seconds of each other, so still a lot of, lot, lot can be played out. As we're watching uh, David Ayers trying to hold off Amelia Lago and Steve Cooley, and David Ayers is probably telling his teammates to run, run, run as quick as he can if he can try to catch up, but it's going to be interesting because Amelia Lago, once he gets around David Ayers, he, he's going to be a car to to look out for. Absolutely, as a, yeah, just looking at the battle between David Ayers and Emilio Largo at the moment, and I think uh, it looks like Largo's quicker, quicker than Ayers at the moment, is, yeah, I think uh, Ayers just got a little bit side. Uh, excuse me, as I just about cough. Uh, is it, yeah, Largo's got a run in Ayers, and uh, I wonder if he'll try and make a move in, into this again. Uh, as I, I was about to say, uh, it looks like Largo's quicker than Ayers at the moment. Yeah, let's look it on the inside. New nope. goes over the left-hand side of David Ayers. He's gonna try to take an opportunity to do a late move if he's got enough, and he'll get it, get by easily. Yep, that was a good move by Largo. He managed to get one side and make the move stick. Is able to look at a replay of McBarry and uh, uh, this oh boy, into turn one. It looks like he might have carried too much speed. Oh, not again. Oh dear, this... This is gonna end poorly. Oh, this is from a, a earlier at the start. Oh, I this think. was earlier at the... Oh yeah, this was earlier from when he had an incident earlier. Boy, he is not having a luck right now. Just went way... Yeah, it looks like he just carried too much corner speed on the, end, the corner wrench and just uh, ran wide and ended up spinning, but... Uh, he managed to get going again uh, after that. Oh, Rizzo's uh, having issues. Oh, Rizzo's out. As I just looking at a replay of Rizzo, it looks like uh, just uh, looking to see what happened. And I wonder if I wonder I wonder if some, if he had an emergency come up all of a sudden because he went and pulled off and looks like he just uh, left the ser left. He looks like he left the server. Maybe don't know. 
Yeah, I'm just looking at the live time to see what happened. And it just says he's in the pits at the moment. So, yeah, it could be, as you said, Tyler, something something came up or an uh, emergency, excuse me, an emergency came up as uh, we look back up at the front of our, uh, at our top three, Jez Banks, Dan Blake and Craig Jones. And, uh, yeah, Alio Lag was making a move on David Ayers again. And, yeah, yeah, these guys are still close together, but in front of them, they're cats and they're Carl Hardy. So, yeah, uh, I think they might be working together. Yeah, definitely. And they are closing up, but Jez, Jez Banks is just leaving Dan, his teammate behind. But Dan Blake and Carl Hardy are running some quicker times right now, so it might not be too long before he catches up, but they've still got another six, well, more like seven minutes to go before the end of the race, so a lot can happen. Absolutely. As a we look at a... As we look at uh, Amir Largo, and Steve Cooley's just made a move on Amir Largo for a P6. So oof, that, oof, was, that good... was close. Oof. Yeah, it was a good move by Steve Cooley, and uh, yeah, he's up into P6, and he's uh, he's on the he's on the hunt now for David Ayers. Yeah, and these guys, these three are starting to close in on the back of the rest of the field again. As was, oof, Carl Hardy went to, goes a little bit off there, get the momentum up, but boy, that that could have been really. There. Yeah, absolutely. As, uh, as Cooley's uh, managed to close the gap on David Dares, and I think uh, if Cooley can get a good run on the exit to the, to the back straight, he could get a run in Ayers and try and uh, maybe even take P5. Yeah, he might have that. He might have that opportunity, as he is going to have a bigger run. But the question is, will David try to block, or will they try to, or will David just let Cooley buy to try to, yeah. Ayers is just going to probably just let him by so they can try to catch up to the rest of the field again. As a, yeah, cool, he's got a run in Ayers, and I wonder, I wonder if the Ayers, oh, I thought Ayers, Ayers was going to try and dive up the inside, the, up the inside again, but cool, he's made the move and up to be, oh, it's Cooley sideways. Oh, just a little error there on Cooley, and tires decided to say nope. Just, man, that was very unfortunate there for Cooley. Had a good run, it just looked like they just didn't want to cooperate with him going into that final shot. Absolutely. As a, yeah, Carl Hardy's caught up to the back of his teammate Craig Jones, and I wonder if there'll be any team orders or if it'll just be just a case of a battle, but a case of battle, right. or maybe try and work together. I, Banks, a Blake, sorry. I, yeah, I honestly think they're going to try to work together and try to catch up to the Fury. Furious uh, Motorsport guys, because right now it's still one-two with Jess Banks slowly ahead still. But I, I think Result Clothing, if they want an opportunity to increase their po in to in increase their finish, they're going to have to work together to catch up to uh, Yes Banks and Dan Blake. Yeah, so as a, I believe they, I think they got under got about three, three laps remaining. I think. Or... Uh, should be, should be three. Either it's three laps or four laps to go. Cause the last, the last race, it was, it took ten. Absolutely. Yeah, so we're, yeah. So we should be at three to go this time, as we're on lap seven now. Okay. Is a yeah. McBody's a uh, currently on the back of a uh, Dale ben Benison uh, for, for the ninth place, and McBody is going for the he's going for the move on Benison, and yeah, it's a. Uh, a bit of a, a bit of an unlucky a, look, a bit of an unlucky evening so far for Mick. Uh, he seems to be he seems to be on the pace, but just the uh, luck, luck's not gone his way so far. Yeah, definitely. He's going to be able to easily clear uh, Dale Bennis, and he's now going to be able to work uh, trying to get around Andrew Barber. Uh, as we're looking back towards Emilia Lager now, trying still trying to find a way around David Ayers, just still struggling to be able to make that overtake work. Indeed, is a yeah. David Ayers is a in a battle with, with a Largo for a, for a, a P5 at the moment, and yeah, I thought. A, <coughs> excuse me. Is a, I thought a, I thought Lar a Largo would have been closer to the front a, tonight. A, he's always been, he was close to the front last week at a, to Scuba, a, but a, tonight he just seems to be. I don't know if he's off the pace or if he's just not comfortable with the track. I want to see. I think he's just off the pace a little. I think he's just been struggling, or he might be doing some different stuff. But I don't know. It's definitely, def definitely not the usual Emilio Lager that we've seen er in previous. 
Is it? Yeah, absolutely. Is it? I think. Uh, uh, excuse me, my lifetime is just playing up, but I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Why, why uh, Amelia was just not up at the front. I mean, he's. I've always watched, He's always been quick in this car. As we look back up at the front with uh, Jazz Banks and Dan Blake, the two the two teammates. Uh, uh, not uh, fighting, not fighting too hard, but uh, right behind them is Craig Jones. Yeah, the the Craig Jones and Carl Hardy, the two result closing cars, are ca half ca caught up to uh, Yes Banks and Dan Blake. So things are really going to get interesting now, as we are at should be at one lap, two laps to go, I should say, as we should be working lap nine. Yeah, as a yeah, as you say. I as you say, Tyler, the, the two result clothing guys, and uh, Jones and Hardy, have managed to catch up to the two Fury Sim Sport teammates. So, yeah, I think yeah, we could be on for. We might even be on for a, for a four way fight for the win uh, on the last lap. Uh, but I don't think if I was the result clothing guys, I would say, say I, would be, I would be telling each other, just say to each other, who, whoever's in front of a. Uh, who's ever in third place, for example, if Craig Jones is in uh, third place at the moment, if Craig Jones is, is in P3. Then I would say to Craig Jones, just yeah, you go, you go and fight for the win, and I'll be, I'll act as a wingman. Yep. As looking on board with Dan Blake now, he's a little closer, so he might have an opportunity to use his draft and get around uh, Yes Banks. So we'll see how this goes. It, yeah, I was about to say. I was about to say as well. It looks like a. I don't know what I would do if I was if I was Blake. If I would attack attack my teammate or just try and act as a. a as a, as a rear gunner, just trying to protect him, but it looks like Blake's maybe. Mm, it, so good to say Blake. Yeah, I was gonna say this is more of a difficult decision, especially if you want to still finish one two, but at the same time you've got you got two of your opposing team with two of their drivers right on your tail as well. So it, honestly, if, if you honestly, if I was Dan, if you know you're the quicker driver. Just, Fight it out as much as possible, you, even though you're fighting it with your teammate. Try to find a way to get around him, and you can be able to pull away and maybe try to at least secure one, two with you up in front instead. But uh, strategy-wise, right now for this last lap will be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. As uh, yeah, Dan Blake absolutely clobbers that curve. As yeah, I think uh, if I was Jess Banks and I was in the lead, I would probably say to Dan just K. Uh, I know you want to win, but maybe just think of the team and just settle for a one-two. Kind of just uh, act as a, uh, as my uh, act as a wingman, just to protect my teammate, uh, so he wins the race and we get a one-two. But yeah, I, I can understand in a way that you'd want to win a race, but also on the other hand, if it was me, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to compromise my team's chances of a one-two with a uh, with two other cars behind. Uh, but yeah, we're on we're onto the back straight now in the last lap, and uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yep, as Dan Blake's going to be in a full draft here, and he's going to have a lot more momentum, and Craig Jones and Carl Hardy are going to be right behind each other as well, trying to see what they can do, trying to make any kind of... Oh, Blake's, yeah. going, Blake's going for it. Yep, here's Dan, going up on the inside. Is it Blake's up the inside? Can he pull off? Late, late breaking, going to be able to get it. As a Blake's trying to switch back. Oh, Jones oh. going... Jones has got to run. They're squeezing. Oh, oh. Is there going to be contact? Oh, oh yep. There will be contact. Oh. Big push, but not enough. Not enough for Craig Jones to get around Yes Banks. And Dan Blake will win it. That was absolutely... That was fantastic racing between all four of them. Uh, that was absolutely fantastic. As, uh, yeah, Mick, Mick, uh, Mick Barry is going for a bit of rally cross across the grass. As, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve Cooley comes across the line for 7th, uh, Mick Barry will come across the line for 8th, and then Mike Barry is uh, Andrew Barber uh, finishing in ninth and rounding out the top 10 will be, oh, there, Dale Benison, Benison's running out of fuel, so he might lose 10th place. And indeed he does, as John Tustin gets around. As uh, Yeah, John Tustin will round out the top 10, and Benison crawls across the line in 11th place, and yeah, got his fuel calculations wrong again. As a, yeah, it looks like yeah, race two is in the books, and yeah, Tyler, that was a that was another fantastic race, uh, especially at the front between the top four, and yeah, that was a good, that was an awesome last lap. Yeah, definitely, and especially seeing how the seeing how the team how the team battle went.
for especially for both uh furious for both fury motorsports and uh result clothing i mean it really that really showed how how close both of these teams absolutely uh, yeah the the results are up on your screen right now uh, yeah dan blake just uh, just takes a win in the uh, race two teammate uh, jez banks rounds out the top two Craig Jones takes uh, a brilliant third place for result clothing with teammate Cal Hardy in fourth. Emilio Largo finishes in fifth. David Ayers, uh, another good result for result clothing. They uh, take six. Steve Cooley takes seventh. McBarry recovers to finish in eighth place. Uh, Andrew Barber finishes in ninth. And round out the top ten is John Tustin. Yep, then Dale, Dale Dennison finishing in 11th. Nick McCarron one lap down, finishing 12th. Uh, Steve Hefford finishing in 13th. Cesar Rizzo having an uh, having a li- an emergency, uh, more than likely he had to take care of real quick, finishing in 14th, and then Mikey Key after that unfortunate wreck uh, near the start, finishing in 15th. Yep, and yeah, you know, that race was brilliant, and I think uh, yeah, I think uh, we should be able for the same in the last race, was the last race of this evening, uh, Tyler, and uh, for race three, and yeah, uh, we're just going to go for a commercial break, but uh, don't go away and join us. Uh, Join us in a few uh, a few minutes time for a uh, for ra- for the last race of the season, which is race three. And yeah, we we'll look forward to uh, look, uh, look forward to look forward to seeing you then.
Before you can get on track, you'll need to calibrate your wheel and pedal set. You'll need to do this in iRacing, even if you have already done this using your own controller software. Prior to entering the sim, make sure you've downloaded and installed the latest drivers from the manufacturer's website. Once that's done, follow these easy steps to calibrate your controller. We recommend calibrating in a test session, so pick a car and then click test. Don't go into a practice or official session. The last thing you want to do is have you go on track and crash into another car. Once you're in your test session, click on the options button. You will then see input calibration. 
This is where your calibration takes place. Start by clicking on the steering button. You will then be prompted to turn your wheel fully one direction and then another. Make sure you place your wheel back into its centering position before hitting done. Now you'll be asked to turn your wheel 90 degrees to the left. Make sure it's at 90 and hold it there while hitting done. For pedals, click on the pedals button. Here you'll be asked to press the throttle all the way down and then release it. You'll do the same for the brake and clutch pedal if you have one. For the gearbox, you'll first be asked to set buttons for sequential shifting. Once complete, a prompt will ask if you have a H pattern shifter. If not, hit no. If yes, click it and you'll begin to map the gears individually. Once you've completed these steps, you are calibrated and ready to go racing. My name is Stephen Cortpenos. I'm a senior web developer here at iRacing and I work on the beta UI. It's funny because iRacing has been around for 10 years, but we want to keep delivering the best possible user experience to our customers. And we've found that the old UI isn't exactly what we're trying to deliver in 2018. We want to use new features and provide the best possible experience when using the sim. One of the projects that I've been working on is uh, some custom heat racing configuration for hosted races. We've been listening to our customers. Everyone's been asking for uh, custom heat races. Uh, maybe you want to tweak a few things with the preset iRacing configurations. Well, now you can using the beta UI. So once you're at the homepage of the beta UI, you just go to create a race. And from there, you go to your set race options. And you'll notice here under event types, you can actually choose heat racing. First, I'm gonna show you how to create a new format from scratch. You can choose the number of entrants. And as you can see, when I made that change, the change was actually reflected on the right side in the graph. Also, you can use the estimated duration at the bottom of the graph when you're changing the length to see what the total duration of your event will be. In addition, you can customize every aspect of the session information, practice, qualifying, heat races, consolations, and of course, the final feature race. Because the beta UI allows us to develop features that are robust and complex, this feature will be exclusively available on the beta UI. Once you've made all of the changes, you can hit save. save. Hello everyone and welcome back to Apex Racing TV here at the, the BSR MX5 Monday Cup. They join us for, for race speed. And uh, yeah, Tyler, uh, that race, the ending to race two was absolutely fantastic between the top four and yeah, it just pr it proved that, uh, why the MX-5 is such a popular car in high racing that, uh, that it's just, it, provides, it provides great racing. Yeah, definitely. It was definitely offered some good, good racing overall. So I I love to finish. It was it was a really good finish there on plenty of opportunities for everyone to try to see if they can make that opportunity to finish. So especially when it was a teammate battle as well. So uh, I can't wait for this final race of the... Of the... Absolutely. As a, yeah, we're just, uh, just uh, coming to the end of qualifying for race three. Yeah, as you said, uh, it was good to see the battle for, for the race when going right down to the last lap, especially for a... Uh, uh, especially between, I should say, between the, the teammates as well, with the two Fury, Fury Sim Sport cars and also the two uh, result proving cars. So. Yeah, uh, it was good to see uh, good to see the teammates battle for the one. And yeah, uh, hopefully we should uh, should be in for uh, another uh, another great race in the in the last race of the season. And uh, what's the race be? And uh, hopefully that will be interesting. That will be good to see. Uh, I should say uh, that will be good to see uh, some day, some uh, great racing, great and close racing to round out the evening. Yeah, definitely. It'll be it'll be exciting to see how this goes. I think yeah, yeah, just looking at the uh, we're looking at McBarry and then yeah, just looking at David Ayers at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I have to say, Tyler, I've been quite impressed by the result, the, the result, guys uh, this evening. They've, they've been doing, been doing a 
get my words out. They've been doing really well uh, with uh, good results in race one and race two, and hopefully they can uh, round it off this evening in race three. Yeah, definitely. It's been some great racing overall, so I'm, hope I'm hoping for the same form. Would love to see another good battle between both uh, both of the uh, result clothing guys and the uh, Fury Fury uh, Motorsport guys as well. So it'll be interesting to see how this how this play. Yeah, as uh, we're just a uh, just on board with Emil Olargo at the moment, uh, who sets a lot of time and uh, pops up into pops up into sixth place. So yeah. Uh, as I, as I was saying, uh, saying in race two, Tyler, I've been quite surprised that Emilio has not been further up the up the grid than usual. But as I, it was like I said before, I guess it's just a uh, just a combination of maybe not being comfortable with the track, or just uh, just being off the pace, or maybe just a uh, lack of time to practice uh, for this race. Uh, but yeah, he's uh, he's been he's been st still finishing races and getting decent results. So it's uh, it's not it's not a not all not all been a or it's not been a bad. Eat. Not that bad day this evening for Emilio. Yeah, and I, honestly, I think as I also think as well that it could be because could be as well with um him not having a teammate, uh, not being part of a team, because a lot of these uh teams have been able to run lap run uh lap times and give each give each other a tow around on trying to be able to get a quicker lap time. So that might be another scenario uh, there as well, where Emilio might not have any teammates and it really hurts him in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. I have to agree with that because, uh, yeah, being part of a team in the MX5, I've found it's, uh, it definitely helps uh, in a league such as BSR and a car such as the Mazda MX5. I mean, uh, the team that I race for in the BSR on the Tuesday night is we all work, to get, we all work together in qualifying to try and give each other a slip save and try and get each other uh, up up uh, up towards the front or close to the front as uh, as much as possible and just try and get the best position possible but yeah uh, as a as a grid just pops up right now a uh, car hardy takes pole position for race three teammate mcbuy is on side time it's good uh, good uh, good stuff from the the result clothing guys on the front row dan blake uh, qualifies in third the uh, fourth place is jess banks david there's in fifth amelia largo in six uh, steve Kuehl in seventh Eight position is John Tustin alongside Thomas Craig Jones and rounding out the top ten is Gary Wal Walbot Bolt uh, or have you say that uh, uh, yeah I think it's Wal uh Walbot. Uh yeah or Walbot. uh yeah, I think the t I wanna say the T is either the T or the D is silent. One of the two. Uh and then uh eleventh place is gonna be Dale uh Benison. Twelfth place is gonna be Steve Heffer. 13th Mick McCarran, 14th Brian uh, Brian Paley, and then uh, rounding out the 15 cars is going to be Andrew Barber. Is a yeah, we're just uh, waiting for the lights to come on. Is a as soon as the, all the cars are grid gridded up, I think yeah, we'll just be waiting for the lights to come on. And yeah, uh, yeah, the lights are just about to come on now. So as soon as the lights go out, we'll be underway with uh, the start of uh, the final race to see now the race. Uh, Race three as a yeah, Car Hardy gets a great start off the line, but teammate McBarry gets a great start off the line as well as a as a head down into turn one. And they will be interested to see if they, if these if these guys can get make it through turn one without any issues and they uh, see if they can make it through the first lap without any issues. But uh, yeah, uh, so far so good. Yeah, running through really clean. A few cars still going two by two, but they should start uh, single filing out as they go through the little quick right hander and heading down towards the S's and. Carl Hardy leads the way with Mick Berry. Still a few cars further back, two by two. A little, little bit of contact, but giving each other some room right while they can. So, great start to the race currently. So, ooh, some, I just, some, Someone's never mind. Oh. In the wall. And someone else is in the wall. Yep. That was Steve Cool. That was Steve Cooley and Yes Banks. Both having, uh, Jess Banks have both having issues. Uh,. Let's see here. Oh yeah, can already see this now. Yeah, a little too much rumble strip, and yep, into the wall. And then here comes Steve Coley with his issue. Yeah, as you said, it looks like he's carried the. Uh, he just got too much uh, inside curb, and yeah, yeah, watching the board from Coley, and yep, he ends up uh, joining joining Jez Banks in the wall for for a little bit, a little party. So yeah. Uh, 
unfortunate for Jez Banks. He had a great evening for Fury Sun Sport, but his teammate Dan Blake is currently up there in second place, but right behind Dan Blake is uh, Mick Barry for result clothing. So good run for Mick so far. Yeah, definitely. And all of you iRacers that are uh, watching this, just take a note. When you're in these kind of cars, well, I should almost, I should more or less say any car for this track for Road Atlanta. Be mindful of that uh, left hander, uh, of that left hander on that inside curb. Ooh, as uh, looks like Dan Blake got a little bit of damage from the bump from uh, Mick Barry there. Um, but back to what I was saying real quick. That left hander, just be very cautious and not try to attack that curb too hard. Because if you attack that car too, uh, curb too hard and really upset the car, good luck trying to save it. Because nine times out of ten you're going to head towards a, uh, a concrete wall and that will more than likely end your race. Uh, absolutely. As a, yeah, a, camera, a, a cameraman, a Mark Barbonero says in chat, well, at least it wasn't a flip. <laughs> as a, True. As a, as a, as we look back at this part on the, on the, on the back straight, as a, Emilio Largo is right behind David Dares, but uh, right behind Largo is a team, is a result clothing teammate, Craig Jones, and yeah, uh, Largo having a bit of a better run in this race so far, but uh, yeah, a big game uh, currently at the moment uh, leading the race is Carl Hardy with teammate uh, Mick Barry. Uh, Mick Barry was in second place, but uh, Dan Blake tried to take second place from Mick Barry, but Mick Barry does absolutely does a, a fantastic job to uh, hold off Blake and retain second. Yeah, definitely is. Looking back further, ooh, uh, that doesn't look pretty. That's the sixth of Gary Wolbert. Uh, Wolbert. Uh, having issues. Uh, looks like he might have just lost it coming out of the chicane there, which I I, I have seen that happen before. Ooh. Oh boy. Uh, oh oh dear. Here we go. Oh, I'm hoping everyone can make it through. Oh Ooh, come dear. Guys come on, guys. Okay. You guys are teammates. Don't take yourselves out now. Man. I had to knock on wood there for a second, because for <laughs> once, for once so far, not a single result clothing car has taken each other out so far. I've been knocking on wood right now, so I'm, I'm still knocking on wood. So As, uh, David Ayers was up the inside of, sorry to cut you off, Tyler, but David Ayers, or David Ayers was up the inside of Emilio Largo, and he moves up into, moves up into fourth place, but Emilio Largo will have to run in the home, but home straight, I mean back straight. Yep, as Mila Lago looking on the right hand side now. Trying to see if he's got a big enough run. He has the preferred line, but it looks like he is going to have a little bit better run than David Ayers, so it looks like he should be able to clear him before. Yes, he will. Uh oh, as here comes. Alright, and McBerry oh, checks a little. Look out. Look Ooh. out. That was close. I'm not, not sure if there was a little bit of contact there, but. Oh, Ayers has got the run in the, on the exit of the final corner, and he's. He, he, oh, that was a beautiful move by David there as he managed to get the switch back and yeah, he's back, he's back up to fourth place as he head across yep. the line. Mick Berry was looking on the inside there, but it looked like John Tussing had an even better run. As so now, here we go. Four by two by two heading into turn one. Largo's up the inside of David there, but David there's is managing to hold in the, the outside. And yeah, he managed to... Ooh. Oh dear. Oh, 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 here we go. Eh, here we go. And that, that's, yep. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I had a feeling that something was going to happen, and unfortunately something did happen. But, eh, uh, wait, what for the, those guys get, those guys getting caught up, it's allowed McBarry up into fourth position, and he's, eh, uh, he's kind of slow, slowly, oh, is it uh, something sideways in the back there? Uh, something Emilio. sideways in the background. That was Emilio's big sideways there, was able to catch it and was able to save it and pass um, Dale Benningson at the same time, which that was kind of shocker. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, still, it's starting to settle down a little bit, but we've still got this, uh, we've still got this four car battle for a uh, fourth position between Barry, Thurston, Largo and Benison. But uh, yeah, just looking at the replay now uh, with uh, David Dares and Emilio Largo, and yeah, it was just unfortunate what happened because uh, that was a good scrap between the uh, Largo and Ayers, but I think uh, it was always there was always bound to it was always bound to have uh, to be something or something was bound to happen as uh, they were so close together coming up to the the S's and 
Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it resulted in contact. Yeah, but as we're looking at the replay now from the rear and just that little bit of a tap right about now, or a little bit. Here we go. And, yep, just that little touch, and there goes the Constantine back to yeah. Into the tire barrier, at least, for David Ayers, so it wasn't too bad, but it still really, really hurt David Ayers in the long run. Yeah, I think yeah, Emilio just tried to go for a gap, but wasn't there, or he went for a gap, but it was opened, and then the gap just started closing, and Emilio uh, just ended up having some con contact with David Ayers as uh, we look through the field uh, between uh, the battle for seventh place between uh, Benison and Hereford. Ooh, Ooh Mick Berry had, had an issue there. Boy, he's been struggling on that uh, uphill turn, on that uphill left hander. Yeah, uh, it seems to be that the exit of the the exit of the S's is catching a lot of people out. I don't know if it's people just trying to take as much exit curve as possible and try and get a good run on the exit, or but uh, some people just seem to be running a little bit too wide and just just getting sketchy on the exit. Yeah, I think it's just some people trying to run that outside curb and just making some big, mis making mistakes there. It, it's really difficult to be able to get that run going off out that far, especially with how that how that uh, how that curb is designed. So it's it's very very difficult. Absolutely, is it? We're just uh, looking at this battle for fourth place between Largo Tustin, the uh, Largo Tustin Barry Heath, the uh, yeah. Oh, it's a, I can't keep up there, Tyler. I'm, uh, I'm getting all, getting confused. Yeah, as Emilio is pulling ahead and looking at Steve Cooley back out on track. Oh boy, went a little wide there. Still at least, still at least trying to finish on the, trying to finish on the lead lap. So he's got an opportunity to do that. And there's still a lot of things to happen. A lot of things can happen. Absolutely, Z. We're just uh, looking back up at the front at the moment. I have to say, Carl Hardy is doing an absolutely fantastic job of leading this race at the moment. And I have to say, I have to say Tyler, he's, uh, he's built up a little bit of a gap to uh, Dan Blake. Yeah, he's got a little bit of a gap, but looking at the last lap times, it looked like Carl Hardy struggled a little bit. It was in the 137s. Meanwhile, Dan Blake and Craig Jones both in the 36s. So it's. Dan Blake and Craig Jones are starting to catch up, so and especially now with the draft taking effect, now a lot can happen with these top three as they've got a seven second gap over Emilio Lago and John Tusting right now. I mean, and it and it's just growing even more. Uh, yeah, absolutely. As we look at, we're just looking at the the gap between a uh, Hardy and uh, Blake at the moment on screen and. Yeah, one, uh, lap one, Carl Hardy had a 1.6 second lead to uh, Dan Blake, and then it's just slowly slowly started coming down to round about, probably about uh, between, yeah, basically round about the one second mark. And, but uh, yeah, fair play to Carl Hardy, he's, uh, he's putting up a strong drive at the moment, and he's uh, managing to maintain that, or he was maintaining that gap, but now the gap's down to round about half a second. Yeah, oh no, Carl Hardy went off track. Just Dan Blake the lead. Ooh, this is this is for Hardy. Oh, oh, no. but he is able to keep back on track, and hopefully he'll be able to keep back up. But he did lose a lot of time there. As we just look at a replay on board from Carl Hardy, I'm just looking to see what happened. And he just yeah. over overdrove it. Yeah. Yeah. Got, just got to lay it. Out. Yeah, just sideways on the exit and just around wide, and uh, what's it allowed Dan Blake through to uh, pick up the lead and. But uh, luckily, luckily, Carl Hardy's managed to keep going, and he's, uh, he's in third place at the moment. And uh, yeah, uh, Craig Jones, his teammate Craig Jones, is up into second place. And I'm just looking at the gap between uh, Jones and Dan Blake, and I have to say, Jones is maybe or possibly catching the uh, Jones is possibly catching Blake uh, because uh, the last lap the gap was around about seven tenths of a second. And with this long this long back stretch, he's got an opportunity to gain some time. So. It'll be interesting to see as we're should be coming up to I believe should be coming up to two laps to go, two or three laps to go as we're completing lap seven now. So we should be at three to go, uh, getting ready to start lap eight. So three laps to go, anything anything can happen. So a lot of a lot of ground can be made up, and a lot can happen. 
Absolutely, as they were just look, still looking up at the front, they go there this battle for, for, for the lead. And yeah, Craig Jones, he's, uh, he's managed to close that gap right down to Dan Blake. And he's a uh, it's, uh, it's been a great drive by Craig Jones in this race so far. He wasn't he wasn't really anywhere near the front, uh, and the other said, Oh, someone went off Ooh, track. Oh, that's Hardy. Oh, Carl Hardy, oh boy, yeah, that's Carl Hardy is just not having the best break. Uh, just riding on board, and Carl Hardy is ahead into, into turn one. I uh, wonder if yeah, it's going to be he's over, overdrove it again. This time it just, this time it went around on him. He couldn't get in. Didn't get the traction like he did last. Yeah, that was unlucky from Carl Hardy. He just, uh, it's easy to do, easy to do in this car, uh, but doing this car, uh, Tyler, from my, my experience, uh, if you carry too much speed into the corner, right, you just, uh, the, the rear end just gets uh, sketchy or just uh, gets sideways on you, and from there on you're just a passenger. And it's kind of, in the MX5, I've found that you have to you have to be smooth in this car, you kind of use that approach of uh, just being smooth and also using that slow, slow in, passed out technique. Yeah, and and that's the whole thing too. And the the other th uh, scenario you can take in is you really, especially at that corner, you don't want to turn the wheel too hard, especially with these MX-5s. It's just like if you try and snap the wheel too too hard to try to get that to try to get that corner you want to get, the the car will be will get unsettled very easily. And two la two laps in a row, Carl Hardy had that had that happen to him. So really bad luck on his part but it's it's just that's how the car is designed it's very very difficult to be able to to master yeah i have to agree 100 percent with that is a uh, yeah we're just looking at the the graph on the the street the broadcast at the moment is a uh, yeah just showing uh, what the gap's been like uh, yeah uh craig jones he, he's been it's just he's Kind of, he's not closing on, he's not, he's not closing on Dan Blake, but he's maintaining that gap at the same time. And yeah, I think uh, Craig Jones is just kind of saying to, saying to himself, uh, maybe not to overdrive, just to, uh, just take it, just uh, try and get to the finish, and maybe even try and challenge for the win. But yeah, just looking at the gap now, it's round about two, two to three tenths of a second. Yeah, and it's a, definitely, definitely has gotten even closer, but by then. Is a yeah. Jones is right behind uh, Dan Blake, and I think if I was Craig Jones, I would wait behind Dan Blake and wait until the final lap uh, to try and make a move. Uh, I mean, if uh, Craig Jones makes a move right now, he'll be he'll be a sitting duck as a head onto the head onto the back straight on the final lap uh, as Jones goes for the move. And I wonder what what, what will Dan Dan Blake do? Will he let uh, Craig Jones go or to uh, oh, be wait, a little wait. aggressive? Whoa, Whoa. there! Is Craig Jones that was to interesting. Back? Yeah, that was late move for Craig. I mean, for Emilio, or actually no, for Dan Blake. There, sorry. Almost, almost went disastrous because Craig. If Craig kept going that same speed, Craig could have easily have uh, shoved Dan Blake, and Dan Blake could have easily lost. As a oh, Craig Jones is trying to go around the outside. Can he wow, do it? and he made it oh, stick. He made the stick. He managed to get the run on the exit. Oh, Jesus, nice move. As we, as we, so, sorry to cut you off, Tyler, but I think we, yeah, we're on the last lap, so yeah, yeah that was I think, close. I think uh, as soon as you get, as soon as you get in the back straight, this is going to be the advantage down Blake. Yeah, especially with the last lap as well. This is going to get real interesting. As the, yeah, I'm just watching that. Uh, I'm not Dance. sure. Uh, Go ahead. No, no, you, you go first, Tyler. I was going to say, Dan's going to try to... Oh, here, that's good move. Dan should have the... Ooh, run. No, Dan up. messed up. But he still has the run, though, because Craig Jones made the same mistake. Oh, this is going to get interesting now. If I was Dan, I would possibly wait a little bit. Whoa, ooh. Side a, by side. Dan Blake's got the run, but if I was Dan, I would have went to the inside. Yep. Uh, here goes... If I was Craig Jones, I would try and break a little bit later. No, get ready for a big dive bomb move. Here we go. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, oh Dan Blake oh, managed wow. to go the wrong side. That Super. was... Great move by Dan Blake, but how... That was kind of shocking, not seeing Craig Jones trying to fight for the win, trying to fight for the win there. I was expecting a late move. He's not going to get the run. Dan Blake wins race three. 
fantastic stuff. There's a meal of Argo crosses the line for third place. Steve Hefford finishes in fourth. Oh, look out. <laughs> Hefford, beats, Hefford beats McCarran in very close fashion. And we got even a closer battle for the back for, looks like, ninth or tenth. Oh, 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 oh there we go. Well, I, that, that was a lot, that was a lot more calmer than before. Oh, man, cool leads. Cool lead wrecked it, it looks like, uh, because his front end is completely gone. Oh, boy, here we go. Oh, no, don't tell me he messed up on, oh, why do I have a bad feeling about this? Oh, I oh, just oh, 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 earlier. Oh, Ooh, that's a hard hit. Is it? Yeah. yeah, that was a great way to round out the uh, round off the evening. The uh, tower and uh, yeah, they had that battle for the win going right down to the right down to the last corner. And yeah, uh, just watching Steve Steve Kelly on board now. Uh, fair, fair play to him. He's uh, even though even though the car is a bit wrecked, it's uh, he's still he's still trying to get to the finish. Yeah, it's cool. He still should have enough time to be able to make it, make it in time to cross the line. But yeah, that's still overall great racing by all, by all of the drivers in, for tonight. So had some great battles in all the races. Whoa! <laughs> uh, I, think Jesus. I think it's safe to say that um, he does not have a left front tire anymore, because <laughs> that was a, uh, whew, that was a, that was a interesting little uh, position there. I think uh, Steve's trying. <laughs> <laughs> He's messing around now. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, sorry, but I have to clap that. <laughs> oh place, my god! Oh, that was amazing. As a uh, yeah, that was a uh, as yeah, that's a uh, rounds off the evening for for the the BSR MX5 Monday Cup and. Yeah, that a uh, fantastic racing throughout the evening, and I don't know what you think, Tyler. What, what did you think from from your from your perspective? Great battling overall. I mean, fully, it was a lot of things happened, uh, especially some really unfortunate errors. But that was some great, great racing overall. That was absolutely. Oh, uh, as the results are up on your screen, uh, I've looked. I've just, uh, I forgot to read out result, the results, uh, so luckily I caught them on the broadcast. Uh, Dan Blake just takes the win from Craig Jones in race three. Nick McKerran takes a uh, third place. Uh, Mick Barry finishes in fourth. Carl Hardy finishes in fifth. John Tostin finishes in sixth. Jess Banks finishes in seventh. Dale Benison finishes in eighth. David Dares finishes in ninth. And rounding out the top ten is Gary Walberg. Yep, and then eleven places Emilio Largo. Steve Hefford, well, looks like Emilia had another off track penalty from what it looks like. Uh Steve Hefford in twelfth. Steve Coley gonna be finishing in thirteenth. Uh Brandon Brian Peel having a really unfortunate race there, finishing fourteenth, and then Andrew Barber not taking the grid, finishing in Absolutely as a yeah, that's a that's just done racing so they racing for the evening around Road Atlanta and yeah, I think uh, just looking on Discord to see if we've got any people for our interview. Uh, we've got a couple of people in the interview waiting area. Uh, Dan Blake and Jez Banks. Uh, who do you want to take first, uh, Tyler? Uh, I was going to say, why don't we talk to our race winner from race three of Dan Blake? Sounds good. Is a uh, is a uh, yeah joining joining us in the booth now is a. Uh, Dan Blake, uh, the winner of ra race three, just taking the win from uh, Craig Jones, and uh, yeah, over to you, Tyle. Yeah, Dan, that was uh, some great racing there. Had a good battle with Craig Jones there. Granted, I know overall all three for all three races, this will probably be the better one of the better one of the three. But how how was the uh, the whole racing for you for tonight? How's the whole whole race one wasn't very good. I got involved, I didn't step another driver, and that. Maybe in the pits, but not a big deal about that one. The really. second race, I had a good race with my teammate Jez Banks, and the result guys. I was just trying to protect Jez to start with from the result boys, and then he got a bit close on the last lap or two, so I snapped past him, and we just managed to keep that. And in that third race, it was really good racing because uh, I think it was Carl Hardy. He, I was racing with Mick Barry really close. We had a great race side by side, and then he made a mistake and this is a case of trying to catch that four second gap to Carl Hardy and I took Craig Jones with me and eventually I think the pressure told a little bit for Carl in the first corner he had a little moment and then 
me and Craig had a fantastic battle for the victory. Yeah, definitely. I was about to, I was almost about to ask you for that for that race too, if that was good if that was uh if you were trying to protect him or or if you decided to just take what you can, especially with how the uh result how the the two quicker result clothing guys were catching up to you. I was I was almost curious on how that whole play that whole thing played out for you guys. I was originally I was a wingman for Jez. I was trying to keep the result guys behind me, try to pull away and sort of get that gap. But I could see the result boys. They were just not going to let us have it easy. They caught us up, and uh, on the last lap, it, we decided to make the changeover, and I went in front of Jez, and we had to orchestrate it perfectly just to make sure that we didn't get the to keep the one two and make sure the two result boys didn't get through. But we just about made it stick and. Yeah, Jez had a really good race. That's probably the strongest race I've seen from Jez in the Fury car. My teammate is coming on really nicely, and so the rest of the other Fury guys as well. We had Edward May racing last week. He's not been able to race this week, but I think I'm quite confident you'll see a couple more new Fury drivers by the end of the season as well in the series. Well, definitely great racing for you overall, uh, Dan. It's both you and your teammate this week. Really, really unfortunate that you had, unfortunate races you had there at the start, but great. Great finish though for race three. Uh, definitely you have any sponsors in that you want to give, give shouts. Just a quick shout out to Fury Sims, but really we we had a good race as well at the Daytona twenty four hours at the weekend. We got third place in GT three split three, so we've had a good few days, and then obviously we've had some success tonight. So just keep on, we just keep on plugging away and just trying to get better overall as a team and. Yeah, thanks to them guys, and also to you guys for the broadcasters ever, and to the organisers for creating a great series. Damn, Blake, the great, great job again on the, for the racing, and definitely uh, wish you ne- wish you luck again for next week as well. Uh, thank you very much, Tyler. As that was a uh, yeah, Dan Blake, uh, race the uh, winner of race three, uh, joining us for there. Uh, yeah. Uh, Next person uh, and waiting for an interview, I believe, is Jez Banks, uh, who had a, who had a pretty good evening in the in the BSR MX5 Monday Cup this evening. Uh, hey, Jez, uh, can you hear us? Yeah, I can, Ryan. Thanks. Uh, how did the uh, the evening go for you? Uh, did did it go better than expected, or about as uh, well? Did uh, did it go as expected? Uh, I always come into these things with no real expectations i mean R- road atlanta is a track that i i like so um for me in the mx5 it's one that i'm already you know hooked up on on from other cars so i've just got a dial in um the mx5 which seemed to work well this evening um it's good practice sessions and then a couple of well one good race one great race and then a uh, little error in race three which was annoying but these things happen good stuff uh, yeah uh, are you is there any plans for you to race in the in the Tuesday night series, or is it kind of just uh, doing the Monday league just to get some experience, or the, does it just uh, fit, fit around your schedule? Uh, I, I don't know really. I'm, I'm not um, I'm not uh, sure what the uh, the the Tuesday night league is is like. I haven't really looked into it. Um, I think it's uh, a question. We we may put a couple of sim sport cars in there. Um, at the start of the next league, I think I'm getting quite comfortable in the MX5. It's one I'm going to drive in in iRacing now as well, as along with GT3. So I make myself two cars and concentrate on those. Um, so yeah, you, you may well see me across there. Good stuff. Is there anyone that you want to give a shout out to? Anyone you want to thank? A team, the day team, or sponsors, or anything like that? Uh, well, yeah. Firstly, you guys for um, for the uh, the coverage again. It's appreciated. It's always it's always nice to watch it back and see what your guys. What your thoughts are and uh, what you're saying, which is which good, makes it um, makes it an event worth doing. And uh, yeah, Dan Blake, he's um, he's the quicker driver than me, but he's he's very good in in practice sessions. He gives a lot of um, a lot of hints. He'll, he'll watch the Fury drivers and and do a bit of coaching. So uh, yeah, a big shout out to him. He deserved the uh, the win in the second. He was he was quicker than me, and uh, and that was good for the championship. Good stuff. Well, uh, thanks for uh, uh, joining us, uh, Jez, and also a uh, good uh, well done for this evening. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on track next week. Cheers, Ryan. As uh, yeah, that was uh, Jez Bank joining us for an interview, and uh, I can't see can't see anyone else uh, around for an interview, Tyler, or from what I can see on Discord. So, yeah, uh, what the uh, final final take on this evening? 
uh, just overall, it was. I, I just loved how it was, and especially like like what both um, Dan and uh, Jess were talking about in race for race two of how that whole the team how the teamwork worked out really well, and yeah, that was definitely interesting to see, especially seeing how that how that uh, played out in the long run. So definitely Im- definitely impressive by both by both Result Clothing and Fury Sim Sport on how they were able to finish out that race. So great job by both of them. And that was, that was my one thing that really impressed me there. Yeah. I have to agree up the uh, 100% as well. I was uh, quite impressed by, <clears throat> excuse me. I was like uh, quite impressed by the fury, some sport guys and also the result clothing guys. I mean, that was good to see the result clothing guys having the uh, good results this evening. And yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, I'm looking forward to next week. Uh, I'm not sure what track is next week, but uh uh, yeah, looking forward to commentating on the, the series as always, and just uh, before we go as well, just to give you an idea of what series were uh, what other series were broadcasting this week. Uh, yeah, uh, tomorrow I believe, or yeah, tomorrow we were broadcasting the the uh, the Mazda MX5 Tuesday League, uh, and also later to this later this evening, I believe it is a uh, round one of the of the Rutmatek World Challenge series uh, from Daytona International Speedway. So yeah. Uh, yeah, come check it check check out the, the YouTube channel for the, the broadcast of that series later. And then on Wednesday we've got the, the iRace and Le Mans series from Road America. Uh, and then on on Thursday we have a round three of the Dyna the Dyna I can't say that word, but uh, the Sim Race as well with the G T series from Monza. Uh, also we've got the BSR Radical series on Thursday from a uh, Road Atlanta as well, so yeah, uh, that should be interesting to, see, uh, interesting to see how the Radical is around here. And then on Saturday, we have got uh, the Euro V8 Supercar Series from Tuscuba, I can't say that. Tuscuba. Thank you, Sayo. What's, I believe, what's Sam Fitzpatrick and Marco Barbanero will be commentating on, and uh, on Sunday, we have got the Apex Racing League former Renault 3.5 series from also Road Atlanta as well. So yeah, uh, yeah, we're, we're visiting, we're visiting and broadcasting Road Atlanta quite a lot this week. So yeah, uh, must be must be a good luck charm or some must be a sign. But uh, yeah, Road Atlanta is an awesome track and yeah, uh, always good to visit. And yeah, uh, to anyone that's watching, uh, make sure to check back. Uh, for the, the other broadcasts on the, the Apex Racing TV YouTube channel. And yeah, right, from me, from Marco, uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.